baby. What a what a final game, eh? Actually, very spicy. Hello everyone, I'm back with another video for you today and I have a pretty amazing deck to share with you. It's a concept that I'm a little surprised has not been used more in Marvel Snap in terms of meta decks. You basically are using Wave with She-Hulk. It's like a Death Wave deck, kind of, but without death. Now I know Thanos decks often are running this combo, Wave plus She-Hulk to Sunspot, but it works very well in a control-ish style of deck that I've got here as well, where you can play for priority a bit and have a little toolkit of six cost cards, you know, Doctor Doom, Magneto, Aero as a potential play as well, and just sort of play for priority during the game and then have just many, many options for the final turn to really shut your opponent down and destroy them. So I'm really excited about this deck. I think it's very strong. I might just use this next season to climb to infinite rank if nothing changes. But with that being said, let's jump into the cards. So the first one I have is Yellow Jacket, which might be a bit counterintuitive, shall we say because of course wave makes him cost four mana, but the idea is you play him early in the game. If you draw it turn six, when you've played wave, you weren't gonna play that card anyway. At the end of the game, you're gonna play like a She-Hulk plus a six cost card. So it doesn't matter that you're drawing him late, but yeah, if you draw Yellow Jacket early, it's really powerful. It helps you get priority in the game for your arrow, and it helps to offset that negative sort of tempo play that Wave can often represent. Next, we have Sunspot. So this is key for getting a bit of extra value on that turn of five with the Wave. It makes that Wave play a lot better, a lot more consistent in terms of the value that you get. And Sunspot's just a great one-cost card in general, so it fits very nicely in here. Next, we have Iron Fist. I've got the Iron Fist Vulture combo in this deck. It's so versatile. You can either have a turn two into turn three play with the Iron Fist Vulture, or a turn four play, or even a turn five, you know, slotting it in later in the game. It's just so powerful. It lets you move into locations you're locked out of even. Really, really powerful, and I love it in this deck. Very good for priority and such. We've got Lizard in there as well, which is good for, you know, just raw value, just good points on the board, get you ahead early on in the game. The Vulture with the Iron Fist, of course, we've already talked about. I've got Wave there, so Wave is sort of the centerpiece of the deck. I've explained it already, really, but most times you're playing on turn five if you have Sunspot on the board, and then going for She-Hulk plus a very strong alternative play with that She-Hulk to really surprise and overpower the opponent. Alternatively, you can sometimes play Wave on turn three or four to make your curve a bit better, to, you know, play like a Magneto out, for example, on that turn of four and mess with your opponent's plays at the same time. So Wave, really powerful and really good at shutting down a lot of decks if you play it on turn five and deny their turn six, you know, line of play. We've got Maximus in there, just a Great card, you know, get that priority going, get that point slam, love it, very powerful. We have Shang-Chi for a bit of control for the ability to shut down those greedy decks to deal with tall units, and it's great with She-Hulk at the end of the game if you're in a spot where, you know, the opponent has a lot of big units on the board and you need a way to counteract that. We have Arrow in the deck, of course. If we get ahead on board, we can always play that arrow just to completely wreck the opponent's game plan and stop them from getting ahead in one of the lanes we care about winning. Doctor Doom is in there. It's such a great card, honestly, because Doctor Doom can do completely the opposite thing to those sort of big units or the arrow, right? It, it can counter the opponent's arrow if they're playing that and just like fills out your board, makes it a lot uh, healthier in terms of the power that you have, especially when you add in a She-Hulk for that turn six as well. You can really swarm the board with that 25 point play. Really powerful. So She-Hulk, of course, we also have in the deck. Very, very good in this style. You can play it earlier in the game, not necessarily always on turn six, depending on how it goes. Maybe you don't draw some early game cards and you can slot in a turn four She-Hulk or something. Really good card in this deck and, and sort of the main reason I'm playing this version of it. And finally, we have Magneto, which sort of rounds out your turn six toolkit, shall we say, of cards. You know, it's a card that the opponent probably won't be playing around, but it's able to win you the game very effortlessly in a lot of situations depending on how the game's played out whether the opponent has three cost four cost cards in play that can be manipulated so magneto i love as just a, a big body that you can play sometimes or as a tech card that can sort of win you certain situations when the opponent doesn't expect it so that's the deck it's very good i think it's very flexible you can deal with a lot of things in the meta at the moment and I think it's just got a lot of raw power, a lot of points. So I do recommend this if you're trying to climb. I think it's a great option. It might not quite be as good as things like Shuri and Thanos, but it's hard to find a deck that is really. And I think this is a great option if you are a pool three player like myself. So with that being said, let's jump into some games. Let's jump in. So we got Fisk Tower. That could be good with Aero, but obviously Iron Fist. We're not going to want to move stuff in there. We've got Thanos deck 
coming in for the opponent, which can potentially be a bit of an issue for us because they have quite often a She-Hulk in their deck, so our wave might suffer a little bit. We'll see how it goes. Quite tempted to play the Lizard here, maybe on the right location, just stay energy efficient. Baxter building is gone. Instead, we've got a Mindscape. That should well, it'll certainly be interesting. It's good with our Maximus, that's for sure. Mojo World, also pretty interesting here. Well, I kind of want to play the Maximus on turn three. Then again, we might want to save that so that they cannot get rid of all their cards. Save that for turn five, maybe, which would mean we want to play She-Hulk, so we need to float two mana here ne next turn, rather. Perhaps we do something like this. I guess we don't have to play Yellow Jacket yet. We can just go Sunspot and chill for now. The Iron Fist is a bit clunky here because of Fisk Tower. Could just go with the She-Hulk now, to be fair. Then if we draw Arrow, we can play that next turn instead of the Maximus, although I do like that Maximus play. Yeah, I think it's going to have to be She-Hulk. It doesn't really do much for us otherwise if we don't play it now. Uh, perhaps we want to do a Yellow Jacket there as well. Yeah, I think that's good. And hopefully they give us a nice turn six. The Doctor Doom's, like, pretty good for them, honestly. Well, depending on what they do here. Maybe they fill up the Mojo World and then it won't be that good for them. We'll see what happens. It might be hard to win the Mojo World, but of course I do want to put units there. Just, okay, this is a bit awkward, isn't it? I guess we just play Iron Fist Maximus here. Something like that. And then we see what they give us. Maybe they'll give us something that's good in the mid. They might also just arrow me across, which would be really quite painful. But, you know, we've, we've not snapped, so we're pretty free to see what will happen here. It's actually going to be a Thanos from them. Okay. So we know they have Doom and Vulture. That makes it hard for them to... Well, hopefully, hard for them to win in the mid. Ooh. We get a lot of cards here. We've got a very powerful Dino play possible. We've also got a Magneto possible in the in the left here. They're going to be aware of that. The question is, does the Doctor Doom beat us? We get three, six, so we get 12, we got 15 points. So it actually might be enough to beat Doom over here because we have a better tiebreaker than them. And there's no arrow from the opponent. Oh, they're going to retreat. Okay, so I think Dino on the left was going to win for us there. Very nice. Into the next game we go. We've got a Lizard, nice early curve. Oh, and a Wave She-Hulk, which we can use towards the end of the game. That should be really nice for us. Are we against Thanos? No, we're not. Always check that at the start of the game, of course. I've been fortunate enough not to really run into any Kangs on the on the journey while playing games. That is a card I'm very scared of. I don't know if it's actually that good. I'm not sure every deck will want to play it, but it certainly seems like some decks will enjoy the privilege of seeing what the opponent is playing on the last turn or whatever. Should we just go Lizard in the, in the right? We could also Lizard in the middle but I kind of don't want to play it in a location which they are encouraged to also play a lot of cards in. The Vulture, not really the best turn three. I'd much rather have a Maximus right now. We could also just go simply for the wave into Magneto since we don't have a better curve. I think I will go for that here. Just sort of ramp out our big card. It's gonna be a Killmonger there from the opponent. That's not too threatening. Uh, considering playing Magneto over here, to be honest, just to some great value in Necrotia, I think I will do that. I'm gonna move the Killmonger across. They're gonna play a big unit here as well, presumably. It's gonna be a Typhoid Mary. Okay, well, this wave trade was pretty good for us, I think. I could just now skip the turn here, but I think it's not really worth it without having the Sunspot on board. So I'll probably just play two cards here, get that Stark Tower value and go for simply an arrow or something at the end, depending on how we're looking. Maybe a Doctor Doom. See how much value they... Ooh, a Wong. Okay, we can very easily shut that one down. It's probably a Hazmat, I guess, with Luke Cage would be my guess as, as to what they're doing. So I'll just play an arrow. I could snap. I'm not going to. I want them to feel like they have a chance to win here so we can gather some extra cubes. Might have been a snap after this Typhoid Mary play from the opponent in reality. That kind of signaled we had the upper hand in the game, but sort of missed my snap opportunity there a little bit. But hey, you can learn from my little errors, right? If I point them out. I really don't think there's a lot that will beat us here. Hazmat, I mean, it's, it's okay with Luke Cage, but without the double effect, I don't think it'll be enough to win them the right. Here it comes. Hazmat, yep, there it is. Oh, an Absorbing Man, okay. So I just wanted to completely nuke the board. Not really going to do anything for, to us here. 
I'll just take a very easy victory. Okay, here we go. Vibranium Mines. Not sure we will want that necessarily. Maybe later in the game. Do you want to draw some of my nice win cons? Maybe a She-Hulk would be quite nice, potentially. But we can go Iron Fist plus Vulture. Pretty early on here. Ooh. Do I want to just skip my turn to get rid of the collapsed? You know, to get rid of the rocks. Might actually be worth it. Problem is, my curve is going to become very awkward. I, I might... Yeah, I think I have to do it though. Otherwise, I'll just end up losing out big time in the middle. It's not great for us, because obviously they start the game essentially with a few more points for free. Ooh, Quantum Realm's good though for Yellow Jacket. We can get a free cheeky unit in there. I could just go with the wave on Magneto again, honestly. Might be the play since we don't have She-Hulk. I think I do like it quite a lot. It just makes my curve a lot more fluid, really. You know, I end up not wasting a bunch of strength, power, whatever. Can be a bit awkward, you know, depending on what they, uh, what they go ahead and play here. So is it just Magneto mid? Probably is. Probably is. Contest this a bit. Obviously, they're probably going to play their card there as well, which, eh, not amazing for me. I, if I had Shang-Chi, I would consider arrowing them here. But maybe they want to Shuri anyway on turn 4 here, so getting my free Magneto will be quite powerful. I'm actually going to not even play a card, that's really good for me. Maybe they want to She-Hulk this turn for 2 mana? Very happy with that result. And since there's been no Shuri, I don't really care about arrowing them here, I just want to get ahead on board in two locations if, if that's possible. So I'll probably do this play. So we're ahead in the Quantum Realm for now, we get the Vulture across. Uh, we could have gone, we could go for the arrow and then Shang-Chi them, that's another option I suppose, but this looks good. We should a lot of the time have priority now to get a really nice arrow off. We'll see though. Okay, they are going to move me across, so it'll be a 50-50 on priority. Uh, looks like they have prior. What do we want to do here? It's a very interesting spot. Honestly, just an arrow to the left seems quite good. We are going to lose if they have arrow plus a one cost card. Is that a risk we want to take? There's not a lot I can do about that. I think I'll just pay up my cube. If they have it, then they have it. They might not have drawn that final one cost card, you know, the Titania or whatever it might be. They've already played Sunspot Zero, so I feel like we have a pretty good chance of winning here. Oh, it looks like they they do arrow us. Wait, but actually, no, we're going to be fine, aren't we? Because we can, yeah, we can actually uh, take the Titania. That was a very weird one. I, I, I forgot that if they arrow me to the left, then my arrow will still activate. So that was really nice. I guess if they'd arrowed me mid, could have been a different story, but that was a very cheeky win there. But I'm still reeling from that one. That was crazy. Okay, Thanos matchup once more. I'd love to get my wave on turn five, but of course, if you don't have Sunspot, it's not that exciting. Panda cast is good, I guess. I can play one of my six cost cards in there. Oh, the super flow is great for me. This is just a pretty easy snap, I think. Sort of force the opponent to reconsider whether they want to be in this game. Starting with such an advantage is really nice. We've got Shang-Chi. Obviously, Leech can hurt us. That's always a card that Thanos can play and piss you off with. Okay, they actually have Reality Stone for that, of course. But I'm pretty happy we've got Plunder Castle, which is can't really be too bad for me. I guess I'll go with a Lizard now, probably. It's not amazing, and I currently am lacking Sunspot, which we'd love to have for that wave combo to work especially well. I could consider an early wave here, maybe, just to mess with their stones a little bit, especially considering I don't really have any other great plays. Maybe just wave now. Could also skip, play the She-Hulk next turn with the wave. You know, honestly, maybe skipping here is good. Just see what they do. Mind Stone, gonna be it. And I think I like this position a little bit. I'll go She-Hulk wave now, I believe. Um, and we should actually play Yellow Jacket here first, right? We should go bang, bang, bang. And then Doctor Doom at the end, probably. Not sure if we'll be winning. Definitely an argument to play the She-Hulk in the big house as well. I'm going to be able to move with that space stone. And just an arrow, so I think we're looking okay maybe here. We'll see where the units go with Strange Academy. That'll uh, make things very interesting. It's a bit annoying that I don't have a Shang-Chi available. But I think it's quite good that we have the uh, left location sort of on the lock currently. Yeah, I think I think Doctor Doom should be pretty solid here, right? They can move across, but I think Doctor Doom should should be the nail in the coffin. Let's find out. I'm gonna move Lockjaw across, go for the win in the mid, but uh, oh, okay, they have Kang. Mm, I see, I see. 
But I don't know if they can beat the Kang. Sorry, not the Kang, the, uh, the Doctor Doom. I just don't know if it's actually possible for them to do that. We're going to find out, I suppose. Maybe they have a no, Blue Marvel, I don't know. Maybe a Blue Marvel could do it. Here comes Kang. Very fair, very fair card. <laughs> oh, we've encountered an error. Jesus Christ, what is going on? So we saw what the Lockjaw pulled. It pulled a uh, pulled a Chavez, right? Ah, it's a bit of a problem. I don't know how the RNG will work if they do things differently here. Will it cause things to be different? I'm actually very curious. Should we find out? It's really my only play. Still have to go for it. But to be fair, if they move Sunspot across and pull Chavez, we're still winning. I think we're just always winning with this play. So I'm not sure the Kang really matters. Obviously, it maybe saves them from having to give up their cubes because they can see what my bloody final play is, which is a bit unfair, but such is life, you know? Pool five cards be pretty strong, especially when you play two of them in your deck, like this opponent. <laughs> One day I'll have uh, I'll have some of that stuff. Oh, they're actually going to go ahead and Magneto us. I don't think that wins, sir. A little bit uh, crazy for them to play on here when they know that they lose to the Doctor Doom. But maybe they thought I would make a different play because of the Kang coming down. Either way, I'll take my cubes. Thank you very much. Man, I would love to get this wave She-Hulk combo going. Oops, I just snapped instead of saying hello. <laughs> That's not something you do every day, but uh, that is something that I did. I mean, it's maybe fine. There's a Sinister London on the board. It's not the best for Thanos, generally, especially if I have a Shang-Chi. But regardless, a little bit of a weird spot to be in, I suppose. Do I want to play an Iron Fist now or not? Probably not. Maybe we'll do another wave into big, big unit. We can kind of deny the stones once again. Iron Heart in hand. I could go for the Sunspot though and try the wave with She-Hulk. I think that's going to be the play here. Yeah, we can go Sunspot, get the double buff like they're also going with. It should just be, I'm, you know, I'm actually quite happy that I snapped because this is a pretty good situation for us. There's She-Hulk. So now we just want to simply go with like an Iron Heart. So maybe like a, maybe this play, double Iron Heart plus Iron Fist, get a bunch of buffs, and then next turn wave, and then the turn after that we just go bang bang, Shang plus She-Hulk. Easy wins, mate. Hopefully. Let's not jinx it, it is a bloody uh, Thanos deck, so... Oh, that Lemuria is very interesting, that's actually really good for me, I think. Well, maybe not really good, but it's certainly good for me, I would say. The only issue is priority might, we might suffer in the priority side of things here. But I do want to have the option of of, of She-Hulk plus Shang on the left. I'm just scared of arrow from the opponent, right? If they're ahead in the, on the board, they can arrow us, which can be quite painful. We'll see, maybe we play Doctor Doom to play around arrow or something. And we get a lot of Ironheart buffs, which is quite cool. Wave. So they can just go with arrow here if they want. They do have prio. If they arrow us to the middle, how do we win? I believe they also have space stone here so they can move something across. I mean, it's it's not looking too amazing for us, is it? The She-Hulk can be the game changer, I believe. I think I will go with Doctor Doom here because it's just such an unexpected move from us. I think it will get us the win. Let's see. Let's see if we have what it takes. They're gonna go just Kang, okay. It's another Kang gamer. Might even be the same opponent, I guess not. I mean, this this play is really hard for them to beat, right? How do they beat this play? Just completely fill up the board with powerful cards. This is the problem with Kang, he just like... Makes it really hard for me to win cubes against uh, this opponent. I could go for like a Magneto She-Hulk. I'm not sure if that really achieves anything. We kind of assume they wouldn't play an arrow now because they know what I can do, right? They know what I'm capable of. It's funny how the music is still playing. <laughs> so now I wonder if I do this, maybe we'll just get a cheeky win with Shang because let's be honest, they're not really going to arrow me here, are they? When they've seen that I have a Doctor Doom. I think they'll go for a play that beats Doctor Doom and then we can kill them with the Shang-Chi. That's the hope anyway. The Shang will be good in whatever location it goes. It'll be like really, really good. So yeah, Arrow can punish this, but obviously if they play Arrow into me here, they're a little, whoa, they're actually doing it. Whoa, really? 
Okay, but they also moved across the uh, <laughs> the stones, so... Uh, oh, 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 not enough, I'm afraid, Mr. Thanos. I guess we out-mind-gamed the Kang just about there. That was, that was a really interesting final turn, actually. A little mind game there. So what we were going to do, and we did something a little different. Let's go Sunspot here. Not a Thanos deck, let's, you know, see what's going on. We've got a Quinjet, though, so it's uh, not Thanos, but playing Thanos-y cards, I suppose. I think I'll go Iron Fist here and then play Vulture, move him across. I don't need to put a ton of units in the Gamma Lab. We've got a Shang-Chi to sort out the opponent. Ooh, although... Sinister London makes my Vulture play very appealing here. I can get both the Hulk and then also a second Vulture somewhere. So I'm going to snap on this. It seems very good for me. I've got Shang now as well to kill the Hulks, which of course is probably going to be quite key. A snap goes through. That is nice. I'm going to hopefully get this Vulture in the left. Ah, oh, beautiful. That is exactly what we want to see right now. Some insane Shang value on the table. Wave comes into our hand. So what do we want to do now? It might just be a Maximus kind of a turn. I don't really care about drawing the opponent cards. It's like not really the end of the world. What can be a bit weird is Strange Academy. I think I'll just play my Shang now just to be safe, really. Obviously saving it for the end might be good if it's a Shuri deck or whatever, but... Got a Rock Side, so... Just get that Shang out of the hand and then we can play, I don't know, a Wave or whatever here. Um, do we want a Wave here? Like, the wave might mess up their turn, their final turn, right? So I think I will do this and then just go for the Maximus at the end. And uh, hopefully brick them a little bit, although, of course, if they have Dark Hawk, that's going to be quite scary. We also don't have space anymore for the, uh, the value, shall we say. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> okay, this is really good for us, of course. So now they're gonna need, yeah, there's no way they win here, I don't think. We just get the Maximus. And even if they have a big Dark Hawk, what are they gonna do? They can only play one here. So the way of countering their final turn. Nice. Okay, should we play one final game? This person wasn't running the Kang because that was a Thanos stack. I can't remember what they had exactly. It's gonna be Lamentus. That's really good for me, especially when we draw Sunspot. Oh my God. I might hold off on the Sunspot though here just because well, firstly, to be mana efficient and play the Lizard. But secondly, because there might be a Killmonger. I can't quite remember what they were running. I think I'll go with the Sunspot now, though. Oh, that's good for me as well. I sneak myself into the Plunder Castle. I should probably do a snap here. I think we're in a very solid position. Play my Yellow Jacket. I guess I don't need to play it now. I could wait on that. I'm always making that little misplay. <laughs> I like to get my Yellow Jacket out as soon as possible, just because... I mean, you never know. They can move your stuff around and make him a bit awkward, right? If they have a Polaris here, which they might actually. I have a feeling this guy was running Polaris before. Can't really remember, but hey, whatever. I'm justifying my mistakes. That's okay. Naki are going to come in and boost up my stuff. Ooh, and a cloak. Uh, probably we'll just skip this turn, I think. To be fair, no, we could go She-Hulk. We could go She-Hulk here. And I guess it's good because then it will give us the option of playing a Shang instead of Wave. It does sort of give away our plans a bit. Nah, let, let's go ahead and pass, I think, and just use this combo at the end. It seems worth it because we basically get more Sunspot value, right, if we save the She-Hulk. Actually, is that even true? I guess we don't get more Sunspot. Maybe we do. I'm, I can't... I'm not good at calculating things. Okay, this is good for us. Just a Shuri. Professor X is not really a problem. I suppose the one thing that can trouble us is Hobgoblin. But uh, yeah, I mean, not really going to do anything about that, I think. Just play my wave. Hobgoblin into Galactus would be a bit scary. I don't know if I can beat... I think I can beat that because they won't be able to play in Plunder Castle. And I can go Doctor Doom plus She-Hulk. It is Hobgoblin. Uh, yeah, I think we've got that beat though, right? With, with Doom She-Hulk. 17 versus not that much. Nice, we're able to actually be a Galactus deck, even when they get their combination going on here. They probably think they have it in the bag, but... 17 point finish is pretty good, it turns out. Woo, baby! What a, what a final game, eh? Actually, very spicy. Look at that. 
get my four cubes. Thank you very much. So yeah, guys, we did uh, pretty well today with this deck. Climb some ranks. It's pretty powerful. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe as always for more. And watch a video on the screen, perhaps. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.